Okay, this is a short video on a five element beam I bought recently. Um, it's a six meter beam. Um, the reason I bought this is many years ago I had a five element Cushcraft beam and it worked great uh, when I was first licensed as a technician and uh, I love six meters and I haven't had a beam since then. So the reason I chose this one uh, was uh, from my uh, review of the specifications and the quality of the materials in the build it looked like a pretty good antenna. This antenna is made by Innov Antennas I-N-N-O-V antennas all one word. Uh, this model is the 5 element 50 megahertz Optes Yagi assembly. Um, so let's first talk about the materials. The, uh, the beam itself, the boom, is made of aluminum. It's a square aluminum tubing um, and it's pretty sturdy. Uh, the boom has an extension on it right here, which you may see, of about 8 inches. And I think they do that because they have um, many products and many beams, and they use these extensions to uh, lengthen the boom uh, when required for some of their other products, including this one, by the way. Uh, there may be a maximum boom length that they can ship from England, uh, and um, so they use these, these boom extensions. It's pretty solid. Uh, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's very rigid. Um, it's, it seems to be a good method for uh, extending the length of the boom. And um, some antennas will have maybe two or three depending on how long the boom is. Okay, the elements themselves, they are made of aluminum. And the way this works is this half inch aluminum tubing in the center here. And the way you uh, uh, put it in is you put put them in this these insulators. All the hardware is stainless steel. Um, the lock washers, the nuts, the uh, hex bolts or cap screws, which you see here. There's two of them for each insulator, and the insulators themselves are made of Delron or nylon, and they look pretty sturdy. Um, the the tubing, as I mentioned, is aluminum, is a half inch, and then what you do is you put these 3 8 inch uh, tubes in them and adjust them to the proper length as shown in the installation manual. And they're held in there with these hose clamps, these miniature hose clamps. Uh, if you see here, this, uh, <coughs> this has a little give to it because they're slit. The end of the half inch tubing is slit right here in several places. So when you put this in here, and then put the, uh, the hose clamp around it, it squeezes it. Now, um, one of the things they mention or they recommend is to use conductor seal, which seems like a product only they make. It's a conductive sealant, and it goes uh, at the joint and improves conductivity and uh, water, uh, making it more water resistant. So uh, I, got a, I got a can of that, or I got a little tin of that that I'm going to use. Um, another thing you should do, and they mention this, is that when you put the hardware together, you should use an anti-seize compound. They call it uh, an oil of some kind, but it's basically an anti-seize compound. I use the Permatex or Permex um, anti-seize con compound you can get online. And if you don't do that, after a while the, the aluminum, or, or actually the stainless steel hardware will seize up and you'll have a pretty tough time getting it, getting it apart. Um, the other thing I think um, that's highly recommended is you put this antenna together upside down as it's shown here. The insulators are on the top and that's so you can see how to align the elements. On each element there are two marks, actually there's three, one in the, one in the center, one on each end. And what you do is you align them in the insulators so that the mark is showing, uh, there's a mark showing on either side of the insulator, then you know it's centered. Um, even doing this, I found that there's enough play in the holes, uh, the holes in the boom, which have uh, threaded inserts in them, that you can adjust these a little bit. And if you're not careful, if you just put them in there without watching it, um, some of the elements aren't exactly perpendicular to the boom or parallel to each other. So I'd recommend that you uh, wiggle them after you put them in, and then it will, uh, you, can, you can line them up with a square, either perpendicular to the boom and parallel to each other. Uh, at the end of each boom, uh, at the end of each uh, length of the boom, at the ends, there's a plastic cap to prevent water ingress.
so that's pretty good. The um, the actual mount, mounting bracket right here um, is also made of stainless steel, including the U-bolts. And I asked them where to put that, and basically they said anywhere you want. So what I did was I uh, I put it right around where the center of gravity is, so it's balanced, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, the other materials, I, I think, I, again, all all the materials that I'm that I've seen are either aluminum or stainless steel. I would also make recommend making a little bracket that you see here, a bracket holder, <coughs> right here to hold to hold a simulated mast. And this is actually the mast I'm going to use above the rotator, um, just to make it easier to to access the entire beam. So. Um, this took, uh, they shipped this to me and it took about two or three days from England because they shipped it FedEx priority. However, they uh, forgot to include the conductive seal lubricant or uh, conductive sealant in the package. So I had to ask for that separately and that they sent by airmail. And that took uh, 17 days to get here uh, in the Northeast United States from England. Um, so. I was surprised they did that. I thought, you know, it was their fault. They could have shipped it FedEx. I asked them about it, and they said, oh, it's very expensive to ship FedEx priority. But <clears throat> they did do that for the entire antenna. It comes in a big tube, a long uh, cardboard tube, and uh, it got here okay. Um, that's about it in terms of materials. The end caps of the, or the ends of the elements have rubber or plastic end caps, vinyl end caps that you can put on, that you should put on to keep the water from getting inside it. Um, this product has a five-year limited warranty. Uh, I'm really happy with the materials they, they had, uh, they used in, in terms of uh, everything actually. Uh, the materials are pretty good. Um, the one thing that I'll get into next is the instruction and assembly manuals. I think if they fell down anywhere it was on the assembly instructions and manual. So we'll talk about that next. Okay, next let's talk about the assembly instructions. Um, this is a manual I had to ask for. It didn't come with the uh, with the product. Um, I don't know if it was online or I missed it, but I sent them a, an email and they sent me a copy of it in PDF. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but the first thing right off the bat, it says 5 element 50 megahertz Opdesk Yagi Assembly and Instruction Manual. And the picture is not of a 5 element 50 megahertz Yagi assembly. It's a 6 element beam. Uh, and I don't think it's, I think it's too big for a 50 megahertz, so it may be a 10 meter antenna. I don't know. Uh, this was uh, generated in 2012, or copyrighted 2012. Um, the instructions are not that good. I had to uh, ask for many clarifications on this. Um, they had a, um, uh, they have an assembly instruction here at the end which was in the installation manual, didn't seem right to me, so I asked them about it, and they said, no, 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 don't use the one in the instruction manual, use this one, and they sent me another one. And the one they sent me was copyrighted 2011, and the one in the instruction manual is copyrighted 2012, so I, I don't know what's going on here. But this is a typical, you know, length of uh, where the elements, the lengths are supposed to be, and they have many things in here that are kind of confusing. Um, this this left-hand dimension is the distance from the reflector, these ones on the far left, but then they have two in red, one is in parentheses, and I'm still trying to figure out what that means. He sent me something back, but uh, I don't know if, I just, I'm not understanding it, or it's, it's very confusing which dimension you use for that, either uh, the top one or the bottom one. So that's, an, that's one issue. Um, the instructions for the uh, feed point are a little confusing. It says that you should use two balons or chokes at the feed point, or you can use a ferrite core ballon, which is what this is. And I bought this. It's got a, a PL259, uh, or actually an SO239 on one end, and two ring terminals on the other. And what you do is you connect this up to the feed point like this. and it's supposed to exit the feed point at right angles. Now if you remember before I mentioned that this is upside down so when this is the right way 
um, this will be this ballon will be hanging down. However, it's heavy, and so is the coax. So they mentioned in order to <coughs> to keep the coax and the ballon from pulling these terminals apart or pulling them out, you should use uh, some kind of strain relief. Uh, and you can have the coax strain relief to the boom or the mast, depending however you want to do it. You just don't want a lot of weight on this ferric ferri core ballon. The other thing they mentioned is to waterproof the terminals, around the terminals, and, and to use this aerospace silicone sealer. Well, um, the problem is that the link in the, in the instructions don't go anywhere. It's a broken link. Um, so I was able to find it, but again, I don't know which particular sealant they're talking about because this company that they referred to makes dozens of different types of sealants. They also mentioned you can use a bathroom sealant. Well, I, I don't know about that because bathroom sealants have, um, if, you, if you open up a, a RTV of a typical bathroom sealant, they have uh, uh, a smell of vinegar. That's acetic acid. Uh, you don't want to use acetic acid on uh, electronic components or something that could corrode, even, uh, even aluminum. Um, they make silicone rubber sealants that don't have it, that don't have this acetic acid in it, but you have to go find it. Also, um, silicone rubber is fine. It keeps out gross water, but moisture still can penetrate it. Um, fine moisture can get in, into it. So that's an issue you may want to think about. What I'm thinking about using is that liquid, uh, it, liquid insulating adhesive. It's black. It's like a tar material. And um, spreading it on these, on these terminals. <coughs> anyway, that's my current strategy. Another thing I should mention, if I haven't already, is all the hardware, the cap screws, the threaded inserts in the boom, um, uh, everything is metric threads, mostly uh, M4 threads, but not exclusively M4 metric, so um, you have to be aware of that. Um, also when you measure, all the dimensions are in metric too, so you need, I have an 18 inch ruler, I don't think that's going to be long enough. I'm going to try it with the 18-inch ruler and see if I can get the uh, the lengths of the the elements um, correct. And then uh, what you do is this uh, the driven element, those tails there, you move those um, along with the uh, 3 8 inch tubing back and forth until you minimize the SWR. So uh, that's about it for now. I'm going to uh, going to try to get this up on the roof in the next week or so, and. Um, uh, I'll probably do another video on its performance or any other issues I run into with this with this antenna. But to summarize, I, I think the build is, is excellent. The materials they use is good. Uh, instruction manual, like most companies, or like a lot of companies, very confusing. Um, sometimes they use British English as opposed to American English, so it's difficult for us to understand it if you're in the States. Um, so I, I, you know, I got so frustrated with uh, one of the instruction sheets that I rewrote it just so I could understand it myself. And then um, that's about it. Uh, if you like this video, please please like and please subscribe. Thanks.